Hi everyone, thanks for tuning in to another YouTube video. I'm here today in my office in Victoria, British Columbia. We're all staying home these days, but what better time than to work on some digital darkroom skills and post-processing. Now today I want to talk about a problem that I see with a lot of images I see online, which is a lack of proper contrast. So we're going to dig right in here in Photoshop and look at some uh, adjustments that we can make to make your images really pop. Let's get into it. Contrast is probably one of the most important things when it comes to processing your, your bird images. And I don't just mean just the contrast slider. I mean, overall, how do you develop the contrast of an image? Um, so we'll talk about it in a variety of ways. First of all, it's essential that your monitor is properly calibrated. And what I mean by this is that you have a device that you attach onto the monitor and it runs through some software and it generates a specific ICC profile so that what you see on your computer would be the same as what I would see, is the same as the photo lab would see, etc, etc. That is essential. Otherwise, we're just sliding things around with no real no way of knowing what is actually happening. Um, we have to acknowledge that the cameras that we use have a limited dynamic range. And what that means is that the amount that they can capture from light to dark, so the darkest part of the image to the lightest part of the image, it's only a certain range of what, for example, we can see with our eyes. So the camera is always trying to, when it meters the scene, it's always trying to average everything out. And sometimes what happens is when it does that is it makes the overall image look washed out. For example, when you shoot an image on a beautiful, the sun has just come up, direct, beautiful golden light, you have an amazing light to work with. And often there are, you know, shadows and highlights in the natural image, which, which means you hardly have to do anything in processing. But oftentimes, especially in the tropics, I actually really prefer to shoot in, in nice light overcast light, because in this situation, you don't have to worry about light direction, you don't have to worry about really harsh light, um, but the resulting image, because everything is very flat, will need a lot more contrast added to it. In this image we see here of this beautiful um, little fulvous owl, which I took a picture of in Guatemala last year, um, it was at night and there was a fair amount of like water vapor in the air. The, the air was very humid and as a result, the image looks very washed out. So I'm going to walk you through some steps to improve the contrast of this image and it starts here in the raw processing. So we're just going to work our way down these sliders. Now, I think in general, in this image, when I look at the histogram, I can tell I could bump up the um, the brightness a little bit. Um, we might just knock back the brightest parts a little bit. Now, the shadows is where we really need to get to work here. So, for example, if I really slide this back, we might start to see some of those darkest areas coming back to us. Um, I'll knock down the brightest bits of the image a little bit. Now here's where we're really going to start to see a difference. What, let's see what happens if I start sliding the black point down. So we're starting, yes, now we're getting somewhere. Okay, now, well, I don't usually use this texture one, but clarity I really do like. I'm going to crank that clarity up a ways, I think, on this image. And this dehaze one, which, which didn't used to always be on the main menu here, but it is going to work wonders on this image for us. So all of a sudden, that might even be too much. All of a sudden, if I go to the before and after, well, that's not really showing the true before and after because when I opened the image, it already had these settings in. But if I went all the way back, I wonder what this would do. No, that's not going to help me. Um, let's see here. We'll add a little bit of warmth, I think. Just brighten up the, or warm up the white balance. But yeah, if I, I'm going to go ahead and save this image so that we can, um, so that we can uh, edit, continue our journey on the contrast in Photoshop. But what I do want to show you is, let's just say if I, if I did put this back to um, the defaults, there we go. So now we can see how that was, bef that was before. And that's after. So you can really see a massive difference in the contrast that we've already been able to achieve. Okay, let's go ahead and jump into Photoshop here. 
And all I'm going to do here now with this image is I'm just going to run my normal workflow, which if you've followed along with me, you know I'm a big fan of using actions. I talk a lot about using actions in both my guide to post processing and all my post all my process with me guides that are out. There'll be links to those down below. But it's just saves so much time working with actions. So I've got my normal workflow action here. I'll walk you through what it's doing as it does it. I hit play. It first thing it does is it launches the Topaz Denoise AI. I'm just going to go ahead and say OK. I just use the defaults typically. It will now do that sort of slowly because it's it's doing amazing smart things in the background. So we'll let it work its magic. And then we're going to work through a series of steps just to fine tune that contrast that we are so is so important to us. OK, so here we go. My action tells me now if I needed to mask it out of any areas, I could. I'm not going to need to do that on this image. Now, our next opportunity to work with contrast is the levels adjustment. And when I do levels, I always do it as a separate layer so that I can mask it out if I need to. It's a great habit to just sort of check in with your white point. If I hold down the Alt key, I can see the brightest parts of the image that will start to light up there. So I know that that feather there might get a little too bright. But again, that's not really going to be distracting in the image. So I'm happy with that. The black point, you can do the same thing, but I find that the black point is more subjective. So I, I, I'm a huge fan of having a mouse. I definitely would not be doing this on a laptop with a trackpad. It's, get a mouse. Get a mouse with a scrolly wheel, because all I can do now is I'm just scrolling my finger up and down until I like where I land. So I would say maybe there. And then we can check in with the midtones. And this is where often we can really fine tune things. So let's look at our before here. This doesn't seem to be showing it, but we'll come back to that. Okay, now we're going to, it says to mask if we needed to. So for example, if it really bothered us that this feather got too bright, we could mask that back out to what it was before. I don't think I really care. Now, here we have shadows and highlights. So if we had areas that were too dark or too bright, this could help us out with those. But that's going to actually reduce contrast. Now in this case, I don't think that's a problem. So I'm going to turn shadows to zero and highlights, sure, we can knock them down a little bit. Okay, now we're going to do with our saturation. I think in this image we could probably give this guy a little more. Something like that. And then I give myself one final, contrast is so important, I give myself one final opportunity with the contrast slider. And then it's going to ask us where we want to save it. Sure, I'll just save it on the desktop. That's fine. Okay, now let's take a look at where we started. So see how it was still, even after all that raw work we did, it was still a little washed out and we landed up there. What a difference. That does not look, this is what I see often from people. Yeah, it's a good photo, but it's just not quite there from a processing standpoint. And then you get to this and it looks like, I mean, I'll, I'll post a before and after from the raw file out of the camera to this and it is night and day what you can do. Now, if I was just for the record, if I, to finish processing this image, I would go in and also clean up his eyes here. He's got a bit of red eye. I would work on that. But that's a topic for another video. For now, I hope you enjoyed this video about contrast. And if you do want to learn more about post-processing, be sure to check out my, my ebook on post-processing simplified. That's where you want to start. That's the big volume that'll cover the most ground. And then um, you can pick up these add-on modules, these process with me modules, where I go through three different files. So you'll download three of my photos and you'll watch an associated YouTube video of me processing them and explaining what I'm doing. So as the title suggests, you can process with me. So I hope you found this useful. I hope you check out some of my eBooks. Thanks for watching and we'll see you again soon.